Welcome! This is a basic introduction to modeling with PC Swim. To begin with, let's create a new Swim 5 project. We will give it a name and then save it. If we had some background layers, such as a DEM or background image, we could open them for reference. Instead, I'll use one of the built in tile map services in PC Swim and open the Bing Map satellite layer. Now let's select the area that we're going to model. It's going to be in New York. The first thing I'm going to do is place an outfall. The outfall will be left as a free outfall with its invert elevation at sea level. I'll give it a rim elevation of 10 feet. Next, I'll add the manhole that will be draining the study area. We'll give it an invert elevation of 10 feet and a depth of 10 feet. I can connect the two with a conduit. The auto length feature can be turned on to estimate subcatchment areas and conduit lengths for us using the GIS data from the map. Since the length has been assigned, I'll just need to edit the other attributes. I'll put in a Manning's roughness of 0.014 and set the conduit diameter to 1 foot. Now I can create a subcatchment. For the parameters, the area for the subcatchment has already been estimated with the auto length feature, and the outlet has already been set to the most appropriate junction. I'll change the percent imperviousness to 50% in this example. If this was a real model, I'd have to set up the other attributes as well. Now I can add the rainfall data. To do this, I'll open the Rain Gauge Editor and choose from the Design Storms tab. I'll use an SCS Type 2 Storm for this project. I'll set the total rainfall to 5 inches, and because it's a small area, I'll set the rainfall interval to 5 minutes. I'll create that rain gauge with those parameters. And now we are ready to run the model. When I click on Run, PC Swim reminds me that I haven't assigned the rain gauge to the subcatchment. Since there's only one rain gauge, I'll assign that and continue with the run. Once the run is complete, I can look at the continuity error that's been reported in the status bar and see if there's any flooding or surcharging. If I click on that, it will take me into the status panel, where I can view the report. I can assess the continuity error calculations, and go over the water balance here. Once I'm satisfied with the results, I can look at the results within the model. Let's take a look at the profile and view the peak water levels. I can animate it to see when the flooding occurs in the simulation. Since there is flooding, I can edit the pipe size directly in the profile panel to correct it. Once I've adjusted the pipe size on the profile, the attributes panel will update to match a standard pipe size comparable with my edits. If I rerun the model, I can see the flooding has been eliminated with the larger pipe dimension. I can also view the updated peak water levels for the new conduit size. Let's also look at the hydrograph for the conduit as well. Now let's set the graph up for a report. I'll add the rainfall input for the system. Give the graph a title and a subtitle. And I'll zoom into the plot a bit. I can store this graph as a favorite to access it later. Now I want to generate an image for printing. I'll save this extent so I can come back to it later in the map. I'll render the subcatchments layer so it stands out a bit more. Outline color will be red, and I'll make it slightly thicker. And finally, I'll arrange the map and the current layer setup as a favorite. Now I can print this. Let's make some modifications to our print page. First, I'll add the graph we saved to the print layout and specify a drop shadow for the object. 
Next, I'll add the profile we view to the bottom of the page. You can easily change the size and placement of objects on the print page. I'll add a drop shadow to the profile as well. Finally, I'll rearrange the layout a bit to move the scale and north arrow closer to the map. And I'll export this as an image now. If desired, we could save this layout for quick recall. If I open the produced image and zoom in, I can see the quality of the printout. The drop shadow I specified is there, the text is clear, and the resolution of the graph and map is very high quality. Back in PC Swim, we can output this as a Google Earth overlay to send to a client. In Google Earth, the colors I've used for rendering are the same as those used in PC Swim. And I can even click on the entities and view the attributes right in Google Earth. This is just a tiny part of what can be accomplished in PC Swim. For more information, please visit pcswim.com.